Welcome back aliens, my name is Evan Vendi and let's continue with the series on Python. Now in this video we'll talk about iterators. Now when you say iterator, as name suggests it will be used for iterations, right? Example, if you're coming from some other languages like C, C++, Java, we have a very common concept there which is plus plus, right? So when you say you have to iterate, you normally think about one, two, three, right? So we iterate in that way. In fact, we have also seen a concept known as for loop. So in for loop, what we do is we iterate between elements, right? So let's say if you have a list of five elements, using a loop, we can iterate from the first element to the last element. And it is simple, right, in that way. So what I'm saying is, let's say we have a list here, then list will have a value. Now in this case, I will go for seven, eight, nine, five so let's say we have four values here and i want to print them so if you want to print them one by one what you can do is you can use the index numbers right and we have seen that so we can simply say print and in nums we can pass a index value so let's say if i pass an index value zero which will give you so let me just run this code so it will give you the first element which is seven and if you say index value uh, three it will give you the last element which is five in this case so that works right but what if you give a value which is beyond the limit so if i say seven so we don't have eight values here so this will not work and it will give you an error which says least index out of range but that makes sense right we have done this before this is one way of printing the values the other way of printing the values is we we have seen that we have used a loop right now loop is awesome what we can do is we can simply so we can say for i in nums and we'll print all the values so we can simply print i so what this will do now this will print all the values first of all i have to remove this print here and let me just run this code once again and you can see we got all the values these are the two ways we have seen before now we have one more way which is iterator and what if i say behind the scene for for loop as well what works is iterator but first of all let's understand iterator so what I will do is from this list, we got nums, right? So this nums is a list here. So from this list, let me create a iterator. And of course we have to give a name to it. And time being, I will say it. So it is my iterator. I will say it is equal to, so we have a function which will convert your list into iterator. And that function is iter, which is iterator. In this, you will pass your nums. Okay, so nums is a list, we are converting that to an iterator. So iterator will not give you all the values, it will give you one value at a time. Let me show you how that works. So what I will do is I will say print and in this print I will say it. The moment you try to print it and if you run this code, okay, so we got the for loop output. Time will let me just remove that. And if I run this code, uh, you can see this, it is actually printing the object of iterator. We don't want that, we want values, right? In this case, if you want the value, what you can do is you can simply say dot and we have a inbuilt function which is next or a method you can say and when you say next what it will do is it will give you the first value so let me just run this code so you can see we got seven the same way we, when we use index value but the advantage is you don't have to use index values you can simply say it dot next now what do you think what will happen if i do this again uh, so let me just copy this code and paste it here save and let me just run this code now in this case it will give you the next value which is eight so when you say next for the first time it will give you seven when you say next again it will give you eight so think about this what is happening behind the scene behind the scene when you say iterator iterator will have multiple values so you will say hey iterator i'm calling your method which is next now in this next it will pick up one value so maybe there's a loop there which will give you the first value which is seven in this case now, again, we got the value, right? So again, when you call next, it knows the last value of i, which means uh, it will preserve the state of the last value. So it will give the next value. And that's the beauty about iterator, right? So uh, when you call the function again, it will preserve the old value. Okay, this is one way of fetching the next value. We have one more way. So we can simply say print. So we can use a next function in which you can pass the iterator that's your choice you want to use the first way or the second way but both are beautiful when you look at it so if you run this code you can see we got the next value so after printing this again you can use a loop here so let me just use a loop so let me just do this once uh, so with the first print you got the first value which is seven with the next uh, print you got eight let me just use a loop here so i will say for in nums and let me print 
the value of i okay so you can see the moment you've done this code we got this 278 and then we got the entire loop so that's the beauty of iterator right so we can use this iterator function but what if you want to create your own objects because the object which is there here they are inbuilt objects right so the list is inbuilt what if you want to create your own iterator is it possible because if you say integers it is having this function which is next right in fact next is an inbuilt function right you can see that here so it has this function what if you want to create your own so time being, let me just remove this and let me create my own class. I want to get my own object. The moment you say you need your own object, you need your own class, right? So what we want here is I want to print the top 10 values, not all one by one, right? To achieve that, we can create a class here and this class will, will have this class name as top 10. We can have any class, it doesn't matter. And in this top 10, I want to specify the value. I want to have a counter, right? Uh, for that, I will use uh, init function where I will define my counter variable. So I want the counter variable to be, let's say, num. So I will say self dot num is equal to one. I want to start from one. Okay, now when you say you want to create your own iterator, you need two important methods. The first one is iter method. Now iter will give you the object of iterator. The next method you need is next, okay, which is, which will give you the next value or next object. So let's create the iter function here. So I will say I T E R. Now this will give you the object, right? So I will simply return self and let me create one more which is next and as you can guess what next will give you next will give you next value that's simple right how it will give you next value so I want the next value of num so we can say self dot num I want to return this value right but instead of returning this what I will do is I will first of all use a variable val in which I will assign this value self dot num and then I also want to increment, right? Because when you give one, for the next iteration, you want two. For the next iteration, you want three. Uh, so you can say plus equal to one. This is one way you can do that. And then return the value of val, okay? Not num because it is incremented. Now, once that is done, I guess this is your iterator. Now, this top 10 is your iterator. Okay, uh, you want the proof? Let's do it. So I will say values equal to, let me create object of top 10. So val here is object of top 10, which has those values. So once you have these values, how do you know that it's a iterator? So let's use a loop because normally when you have a iterator, we can use loops there, right? So we can say for i in uh, vals and let me print one by one values. I will print i. Now in this case, when you print i, let's see what happens. The moment you done this code, look at the output. Hold on, hold on. We wanted top 10, right? We got thousands of values. In fact, we are getting millions of values now. Let me stop it, otherwise my machine will hang. What went wrong? We wanted top 10, right? Uh, time in, let me just avoid this for loop here. Let's try to understand what is happening. First of all, let me just print one value just to check if everything is working. So I will say vals dot next. Otherwise, you can use next in bracket. You can pass valve or you can say valve dot next when that works. Uh, so if you run this code, you can see we got one. Let me just do this once again. Say save run. Okay, this works. So we got one, two that is working. But what is going wrong with loop? The problem is loop will go from start to end, right? And we are assuming the end would be 10, but nowhere we have mentioned that we want to stop at 10. We have to do that, right? Where you will do it? Of course, every time you use a loop, it will call the next function. That's how it works. So even the for loops internally uses next function. So it will call this next function. And this you have to mention, you have to apply a condition here. So you have to say if, I want to go ahead only if the number is less than 10. So you will say, if self.num is less than equal to 10 in this case you will go ahead that means you will do this stuff otherwise you will not do this stuff right because i'm not even using else here so let me just use a for loop just to see so i will say for i in values and let me print the value of i so let me just run this code oh we got an error i just made a mistake i forgot to put a colon there so let me just run this code and you can see oh something went wrong now what is happening is we are getting top 10 values but after that the loop is still running we don't want that we want to stop a loop right so to stop a loop what you will do is you will write in the else condition if it is going beyond that you will simply raise an exception because the only way to stop a for loop is to raise the exception there's no other way uh, and it handles that exception internally so for loop has that power so let me stop this hey hold on yeah let me just run this code now and you can see that we got one to ten that's how you create your own iterator 
right? So this is our own iterator, and the only way to get the iterator is using those two beautiful function, next and iter. So iter will give you the object of iterator, and next will give you the next object. Uh, in fact, now also you can do that. You can print the, so you, let's use next and let's say values. Okay, so before running this, I want to know from your side, what will happen if I run this code? Uh, of course, this loop will give me all the values, right? So what do you think? Will you get two ones because we are fetching the value one here and then we are running a loop or it will only print from one to 10. So what I want is pause the video, comment your answer and then continue with the video. So let me just run this code. And you can see we got one only once and that's the part of iterator. So once you have got the value of that i here, it will not repeat here. That's the beauty. So that's about iterator. Let me know your thought in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.